Hello, friends. Welcome to the chat. Tonight, we're going to be talking about something a little bit lighter. I feel like lately we've been covering a lot of difficult topics, a lot of like nursing burnout, healthcare, falling into a pit of doom, um, a good reflection of my soul on how I feel in the world of healthcare. But tonight, tonight, I thought we could spend some time just looking at some things that we've like improved from, right? Nursing is a little bit of a hot mess right now, but I just wanted to take a look back and see where it came from because now um, we're doing wild things. Like we're allowed to be married uh, and dudes can be nurses. So, I mean, it has come such a way and we're going to be evaluating it tonight in what I hope is a wee bit of fun. So if you are joining us live, welcome. Let us know tonight um, where you are from or um, if you've ever, um, oh my goodness, what color brings you joy? What's your favorite color? We'll just go with that. Um, and if you're watching on the replay, there will be timestamps. But again, this is just kind of like fun all over the place. Maybe there won't be timestamps. We'll find out. It'll be a surprise. Thanks everyone for being here. Let's get rolling. All right, my dear humans. Um, we have a few exciting announcements. Shayna, happy birthday. Shayna Joseph. I hope you have the most marvelous of birthdays. Um, it is my daughter's birthday tomorrow. And so this is an excellent month to have birthdays. She, except she thinks her birthday was a few weekends uh, on Saturday because that's when we had her birthday party. All of her favorite humans were there. Uh, she turned three and we were like, well, <laughs> we're just going to pretend that this is your actual birthday because tomorrow, which is her actual birthday, is her first day of preschool. And I don't think it's going to go well. I think she's going to have to be pried out of my arms. It's only the orientation, but we will be separated I don't think it will go well. So Shayna, I hope you did not have to be pried out of the arms of someone screaming on your birthday. I hope it was a great day. Happy birthday chat. Well, let's everyone welcome Shayna and say happy birthday, Shayna. I hope it was a beautiful day. And Sydney Daniels, thanks for becoming a YouTube member. I appreciate you. Um, if you would like to help support the channel, you too can become a YouTube member. I'm working on making a discord server so we can have like a private little spot. We chat and you get extra random videos and who else knows what we'll get. You make my soul happy and you help me be able to do this. So thank you so much, Sydney. I appreciate you. And hello everyone else. We have Chad, um, Chad. I mean, we've come a long way. You're allowed to exist. So <laughs> here we go. Um, we have mom and nurse. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Um, Montana gal, Cody, Aaron, um, your favorite nurse. Hello, hello. Cleveland, Ohio, Central Ohio. Ohio is showing up. Um, AP nurse said, I have all my grams white caps from the 50s. That's adorable. Um, I know. Chad said, What? A male nurse? Who'd have thought? I know. We're getting very wild now. We're getting very, very, very wild. Um, Aaron is from just outside Denver, Colorado. Oh, Colorado Springs, your neighbors and purple. My favorite color is yellow. Um, it brings me joy. Barbados, I think you're the most exotic in terms of my location yet. Lawton, Oklahoma, very exciting. Um, Colorado Springs, Dre, Woodville, Ohio, very exciting. All right, friends. Um, Mom and Nurse said, oh, happy birthday to your daughter. Mom and Nurse just had some birthdays in her family. Happy birthday to all her humans. And her birthday's at the end of the month. Perfect, perfect. Um, hello, Kim. Okay, let us dive right in. We will start at the beginning. I thought we could just go back to when this first kind of started, um, not nursing, but the oldest one that I could sort of find. And we will just be critiquing them and just being silly. If you have any other weird nursing rules that you know of, um, that you've ever experienced, please do let us know because I live for these things. Um, there's so many silly silly, silly rules in the world, like not nursing related, but did you know in Pennsylvania, if it is raining, you cannot get your car registered. You can't go and like get whatever, register it with the state because, um, the employees might slip and fall in the rain. <laughs> I was like, what happened to someone that they made that law? That is, that is absolutely wild. Um, Wendy, Wendy said back in my CNA days, a nurse told me that back when she was a new nurse in the early 1970s, she used to have to give up her seat anytime a doctor came into the nurse's station. <laughs> wow. I bet there's honestly probably still areas of the country where this is sort of done. Uh, I should have asked my mom, uh, what is different between now and then in terms of like nursing, because she was a nurse. She probably started in maybe the early to mid eighties. 
And it's going to be interesting. I ordered a book today. I promise we're going to get to the point, but this is going to be interesting. I think I ordered a book today on my search because I was looking through all these different documents and I was like, this is really quite interesting. Um, I ordered a book from 1939 and it's like a nurse's dictionary and it goes through a bunch of the treatments, a bunch of the terms, um, nursing treatments for all sorts of different diseases and stuff. So I thought that could be a fun live. Let me know. Um, if you agree and we can do like a live chat with it and just like look through the book and see what has changed and what they used to do. I think it could be very interesting. Let me know if you agree, if you think that would be a delightful idea, just like the video and tell the YouTube gods that yes, that would be a great idea. And this stream is a great idea and it should tell everyone. Thanks friends. Um, a <laughs> mom and nurse says, if it's a doctor, I like, I will still do that. You're the best Vanessa. That's very kind. Um, I don't know if I would do that. <laughs> It's very territorial over my area. I'm like, I already Cloroxed this. Um, you're going to need to find your own place because I've moved in with my 12 water bottles and my backpack and my, like, I felt like I was constantly breastfeeding there at the end. So I was like, I have my pumping bag. I have like, this is my territory. Uh, please don't even look at it. <laughs> my jacket is here. My other jacket is here. I have my warm blanket. <laughs> night shift life though. So no one was really, we really just marked our territories and sat down. Um, who said Kate? Hello. Hello. And Chad says in Arizona, you can't ride a camel in town. Well, I guess I can never go there because my primary mode of transportation, dang it. <laughs> and Montana gal. Yes. It rains all the time in state college. It does. And that's where I was trying to register my car. I was like, when can I actually do this? <laughs> when can I do this? Oh my goodness. Um, so let us, let me see. I want to know who tried to ride a camel into town and what that camel did before they were like, we've got to ban this. Was it like pooping everywhere? Was it harassing people? <laughs> so many questions along with that statement before they were like, we can't, we can't with the camels. This, we have to put an end to it. All right. Let us channel our oldie times, right? 1800 and that's not the right button. 1800 and do I need to slide this way? This way. Okay, perfect. And 87 nursing rules. Okay. So I thought we should just start off by recognizing in addition to caring for your 50 patients, um, which <laughs> I guess we can't complain friends. Um, well, long-term care, your life is the same. Um, 50 patients. I kind of wanted to know what they did in 1887. <laughs> like, what did you do with your 50 patients? Did you just go around and be like, hello, I hope you're okay. Um, here's some opium. I hope you feel better. Um, in addition to caring for your 50 patients, each bedside nurse will follow these regulations. Okay. Daily sweep and mop of the floors of your ward, dust the patient's furniture and windowsills. <laughs> so, um, that's unfortunate. <laughs> Sounds, um, Yikes. Not shocked, but yikes. Maintain an even temperature in your ward by bringing in a scuttle of coal for the day's business. I haven't really read these beforehand in case you can't tell. Um, so apparently you have to bring your own um, coal. So I feel like that's going to be contradictory with them wanting people to look like incredibly clean. Um, but I guess you have to bring your own coal to work. <laughs> that sounds absolutely terrible. Light is important to observe the patient's condition. Wow. They are onto something right there on to something. Therefore each day fill kerosene lamps, clean chimneys and trim wicks. Wow. This is, um, I mean, they probably weren't doing like a whole lot of actual like nursing type stuff, but this is, uh, this is a lot. The nurse's notes are important in aiding your physician's work. Your make your pens carefully. Well, you may whittle nibs to your individual taste. <laughs> Okay. So I guess, I guess you were also in your spare time when you weren't cleaning the chimneys and going and carrying in coal and the window cells, you should also be making your own pens. I'm really glad I didn't live then. I would not do well. <laughs> what at all. Each nurse on day duty will report every day at 7 a.m. Wow, that's a very regimented, um, very regimented schedule that we still kept and leave at 8 p.m. Oh, wow. <laughs> OK, so I, they have a half an hour on us. We usually show up at 7 and leave at 730, except on the Sabbath, on which day she will be off from 12 noon to 2 p.m. So what happens to the people between 12 noon and 2 p.m.? Do you have like special Sunday nurses? <laughs> <laughs> who comes in she'll be off from 12 noon to 2 p.m you can't even go to like church during that why is that so you can go eat more food that's a very odd thing what would you be doing between 12 and 2 well you get it off and your patients hopefully will not die while you are gone 
<laughs> because the night shift is probably still sleeping. And it sounds like day shift is um, not showing up. Good luck, friends. Graduate nurses in good standing with the director of nurses will be given an evening off each week for courting purposes or two evenings a week if you go regularly to church. <laughs> Okay, so um, as long as you're dating a good Christian boy, uh, then you, because I'm, I'm willing to bet that they probably have a very specific church in mind when they're going to this um, event, then you can, uh, that seems like a paradox. Like, um, I feel like the girls who maybe aren't going to church would maybe be the ones going on more, like needing more, going on more dates. Maybe not. Maybe that's wrong. <laughs> but I'm like, in my mind, I'm like, well, if you're, you're enjoying dates more, um, you need them more often. Maybe that's why they gave them less, but you can go on two dates a week. One, if you're a heathen and you don't go to church. Okay. One, um, each nurse should lay aside from each payday, a goodly sum of her earnings. I mean, and we're saying her a lot because obviously, um, like the Chad's of, and Matthew of the world, you can't be nurses. So, so sorry. <laughs> um, it's just the ladies. Uh, each nurse should lay aside a goodly sum of her earnings for benefits during her declining years. <laughs> not even, not even like your retirement. So I guess we're just going to call them. We're going to call it what it is. You are declining way too fast to even um, work anymore. So uh, we're just going to go let you decline. And hopefully you saved up a goodly sum. I don't know what that means. Um, you can have a goodly, uh, save up a goodly sum um, and oh, so that she will not become a burden. Wow. Okay. So, uh, you need to, um, when you are, if you are not successful on those dates that you go on and remember you are, um, you know, cause you only have a few more good years here, ladies. If you don't manage to capture a man during these times, then you are going to need to put away a lot of money because you will decline. You will decline and it will be bad. And, uh, you know, you don't want to end up in the hospital cause we abandon you for random times during the day, like on Sundays from 12 to two when you're just alone. Um, and you don't want to be a burden. <laughs> wow. Okay lay it on thick. Uh, AP nurse, is that the late thirties and forties? This is 1887. <laughs> so I kind of like how they call it like it is though. I, I feel like instead of, um, telling people that I'm retiring, I'm going to be like, I'm going to go decline. <laughs> I'm going to go decline at home, uh, slowly because I'm so, and become a burden on society. <laughs> my retirement fund will be my anti-burdensome fund. <laughs> oh, I know they meant that as the declining years of age, my sister's texting me. She's like, it's the declining years of age. I'm like, yes, I know, but it's, I feel that it's, it's the decline. Um, yes. Declining years. I like that. I don't know what a goodly sum. Um, I don't know. Oh, your age of decline. Is that your late thirties or forties? I got you friends. My brain's a little slow. Um, AP nurse meant is your late thirties and forties, your age of decline? Probably. I mean, because that's when your, um, your purpose as a woman is no longer needed because, uh, you know, uh, that's when, especially after 40, that's when your eggs, you know, we don't know your chances of getting pregnant are going to, um, they're going to go down. So you are only declining from that point. You know what I mean? Uh, you know, everybody starts dying at 25 and women were useless after we can't have babies. So that's our full decline. So yes, once we, uh, decline at age 40, <laughs> we need to go be spinsters. Um, if, uh, Charles LePage says, if you retire, do we have to call you something other than nurse Liz? No. Well, you can call me queen Liz. That's fine. I will accept that. Um, but, uh, or declining nurse Liz, declining Liz, your declining highness, something like that. Burden, chief burden of society. All of those things are fine. Um, so good. So uh, a goodly sum of earnings, I would say that's probably what, like 30% maybe? I guess it depends on when you're going to decline and how young you are when you start and your luck with the gentleman. Maybe if you are um, getting two dates a week, you can put a little bit less away because you're more likely to uh, secure a dude. Each, um, any nurse who smokes, uses liquor in any form, gets her hair done at a beauty shop or frequent dance halls. We'll give the director of nurses good reason to suspect her worth, her intentions, and her integrity. 
Don't you dare go get your hair done. <laughs> Don't you dare. Matthew Ives, your royal burden. Yes. Yes. That is it now. Your royal burden. <laughs> I love it. That is what I will be when I'm retired. I will let my family know immediately. Um, that is how I shall be addressed. Instead of grandmother, uh, my future grandchildren will call me your royal burden. <laughs> this is my royal burden and grandpa <laughs> over here. <laughs> They'll be like, what, what? <laughs> what on earth? Um, okay. So good. Any drinking, getting your hair done. So they really are not wanting you to get married is what I'm sensing. Um, because you can't get your hair done. You can't go to dance halls. You can't smoke, you can't drink. Um, and <laughs> you will have your worth, not just like your, um, I don't even know your worth intentions and your integrity, because you know, there is nobody who lies more than people who get their hair done. It's a bunch of lies. You aren't really blonde, Sarah. I saw you. I know you. I I see what you're doing, Sarah. You have no integrity. You're a brunette. Good. The nurse who performs her labors and serves her patients and doctors faithfully and without fault for a period of five years will be given an increase by the hospital administration of five cents per day. Wow. If you show up to work every single day, you never take a sick day, you follow every single stupid order that these people put in, and you don't get your hair done, you don't drink liquor, and you never smoke, and you go to church. After five years, you may get five more cents a day. May. It's kind of up to me. <laughs> I guess we can't complain. I guess we can't complain. Okay. I guess we can't complain. Oh, the theme was, as Chad said, the theme was always lady. Not much has changed on the nursing boards. No. And that's really true because it's interesting to look at this and see how nursing is still so like very like, oh, you have to kind of be a saint, like, um, very, you aren't allowed to be a human outside of work. How dare you? How dare you have like tattoos and like, you know, we want to be a human outside of work. Um, good. So we haven't really improved very, very much, but, um, it's pretty uptight. There's like a whole image of like, you have to be like this nice little dainty flower. Um, and we still have that going. So good. Aaron says, well, I guess I'm worthless then. I am right with you. You can also be a royal burden of uselessness right along with me. <laughs> Donald also tell my nurse manager she can't smoke and there will be a problem. It amazes, like there are so many nurses um, that smoke. And if you smoke, this isn't coming after you. I just, I don't know. I, I don't get it. Cause when you see your patients and they're like, I've had patients who have like coded from a COPD exacerbation and their nurse then goes outside and like smokes. I'm like, friend, like to cope with the stress of their patient dying from a COPD or exacerbation, which was caused by the smoking. I'm like, what are we doing? What are we doing here, friend? Okay. So 1800s definitely probably would not have um, been able to be a nurse. Um, I, yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I wouldn't be allowed to go on very many dates. And apparently I wouldn't be allowed to do most of the things I want to do on dates. The only thing that would be fine would be, I can't go to the hairdresser, which is fine. Cause I cut my own hair. Cause no one knows what to do with curly hair and they always mess it up. So that would be my own. That's the only point going in my direction. Maybe night shift would be more fun. Maybe night shift was more fun than too. Okay. Let us check on our next one. Um, where shall we go from here? These thumbnails are very, very tiny. Um, so we're just going to click on one. Um, rules. Oh, this is fun. Rules for patients. Okay. Um, oh, this is very small. <laughs> I'm like, oh, wait, hold on. Hold on. Let me put on my glasses. I already have my glasses on. They don't really help with this. This is not good. I'm almost in my, am I already in my declining years? <laughs> if I can't read this, I'm going to pull it up on a larger, larger page so I can read it. Okay. Princess Louise Scottish Hospital rules for patients. I feel like we are going to need to end up implementing these for today because patients, uh, <laughs> They seem to kind of don't really know what they're doing. AP nurse says it seems more like an intentured servant and it really is. I, I really think it kind of is. Uh, maybe smoking nurses are hoping that they will code soon too. <laughs> maybe they're that stressed. End me now. 
for real. And Chad, I agree. I wish patients had nurses or patients had rules. Patients need rules. All right. Let's see if we like these rules. Rules. I'm not sure when this is from. Maybe we'll get an idea of it. Um, look at that name, Bishopton. That's very fun. Um, okay. Patients will on admission be issued with hospital clothing and equipment required for use whilst in hospital and will be held responsible for any deficiencies or damage to the same. Oh, I like that role. Hospital blue must be worn at all times. Okay. So they kind of put them in, in like their gown. Um, and you know, what do they, I don't know what they give them. Um, but, uh, <laughs> apparently they're like, don't rip your gown. Don't you rip that thing. Don't poop in it. <laughs> We are going to have problems. And don't you dare rip that blood pressure cuff. Uh, I've definitely have patients that have destroyed equipment hospital. I've had patients that have like um, torn apart who've like cut through their hospital beds, like the wiring of the hospital bed with a dinner knife. Um, many who have punched holes in walls uh, pulled like trying to get the sharps container out of the wall, like actually cut around the drywall where the sharps container was to remove it from the wall. Um, broken toilets, broken showers, broken sinks from hitting them with things, <laughs> broken windows. So yeah, I, I, I would, I've had some patients who would probably get kicked out for that, but, um, they didn't, I don't think got in trouble at all. So whenever this was, they would have gotten in trouble and that would have made me a little happier. Suitcases, handbags, civilian clothing, etc., must be handed to the pack store and not retained in the ward. Well, that would be nice. I feel like in hospital rooms now, uh, and it's been like this, like when I've been in the hospital or my family members have been in the hospital, it's like, you just like, I've never seen so much stuff that just accumulates and it gets in the way. And I feel like I was always that nurse that like came into the room and tried, I was like, can I just like try to organize your stuff for you while you're sleeping or like while you're resting? I'm like, cause this is my house can be a disaster at home, but like, I need my room to look like very nice and orderly. Um, and I feel that you've moved your entire home into here and I need to organize it. So then I would come in and I would like put it all nice. And then I don't know what happened during the day, but I came back and it was um, a disaster. <laughs> Caitlin said, the ER is wild. I can only imagine. I, I, I don't want to even imagine. It must be clearly understood that the hospital authorities will not accept responsibility for loss of any property, whether clothing or otherwise, not handed into the pack store. So we actually, that's kind of the same now. Patients have lost all sorts of stuff. Dentures. Um, I feel like dentures and glasses were the most common things that ended up getting lost. Um, but uh, yeah, um, so that rule's the same. Okay, there's one rule. Um, patients on admission are strongly advised to hand any money or valuables to the house steward for safe custody. If these are retained, the hospital authorities will not accept responsibility for any losses. Patients that are too ill on admissions, sisters in charge of the ward, will cause the instructions contained in parts one, two, and three to be carried out. So they will come and take them from you. I feel like this is kind of what we do now. Most places have like an intake assessment where you're like, what do you have with you? And then I have definitely had patients be like, well, I just have um, like weapons. A lot of people show up with weapons um, and you like end up having to take some of the stuff or like medicine. Um, I have had people, I had some guy show up with like $15,000. He's like, I just have like a lot of cash. Um, and... <laughs> Uh, I am pretty sure it was from illicit things. Um, but <laughs> he was like, I, I don't know where to really like put this. And so then I had to call in the middle of the night. I was like calling around the hospital, trying to figure out where I could safely keep this money. Um, while not also <laughs> like I was holding it because he was very confused. Um, I didn't even really know if it was his money. I just knew that there was a lot of it. Uh, and I wandered around a shift with like $15,000 in my pocket until someone from security finally came and took it from me. <laughs> Don't know. <laughs> Probably definitely thought I was like, I could just leave. <laughs> I could leave. <laughs> Here we go. Um, so, okay. That's kind of the same. Um, patients on admission must immediately have a bath. Why don't we have that? feel like there are so many situations where I'm just like, um, I, you should have a bath. <laughs> they should be bathed in my humble opinion in the ER. I know the ER nurses out there are going to be like, heck no, we don't have time for that. But I can't tell you how many people come up and they are just like so messy. And I'm like, this is not fair to you. Where have you been sitting like this? Obviously in the ER, you're there to stabilize and to get them upstairs. So I get it. But, um, <laughs> selfishly, <laughs> 
totally think the ER should have to give them their baths. Um, but yes, baths immediately nearly always happen because I don't know what it is about. Well, usually, I mean, people are quite ill, so I understand, but it's, it's a messy business when people are admitted to the hospital. So bath immediately. Uh, us pay up patients must be washed and shaved before 8 a.m. Holy moly. So patients, if they can walk, um, patients in the, <laughs> I'm laughing because <laughs> nurse Adrian said there should be a car wash <laughs> in the ER. Like when you just, just like push them through on the gurney, give them like a snorkel, like with the glasses and be like, all right, hold your breath. Hold on one second. Welcome to the hospital. We're just going to push you through here. And then it has like the blower. I mean, but for real, that would be very helpful. <laughs> that would be very, very helpful. I know you're not lying. I think it's actually a genius idea. And if you patent that, um, yes, I will help you sell it. <laughs> I will help you sell it. That sounds absolutely amazing. Um, so yes, so they have to be up and shaved before 8 AM. So I wonder if they have to do that. If you're like walking around the ward, you're like, all right, John, I know you broke your leg, but technically you can get up shower and you better shave because you don't want to be uh, unshaven for rounds. So it's very embarrassing. Um, you will not get any more opium if you are not shaved. Okay. So shave up. John shave up. Uh, so they have to shave. Um, all patients must take proper care of their teeth during their visit of treatment in the hospital example by use of a regular toothbrush. So I wonder if that means you, the nurses don't have to do it or the patients have to do it. <laughs> this hospital is like, Hey, if you want to be here, you're going to be shaving. You're going to bathe immediately once you get here. And we do not tolerate bad breath. Okay. You will be taking care of your teeth. <laughs> I wonder if that's the nurse's job or not. Um, I wonder nurse Adrian said, because it's literally hard to assess some patients when they come to the floor. Yes, it is. It's hard sometimes with the smell. Um, it's hard sometimes with the amount of stuff that's on their skin that you can't see their skin. Um, it's a lot. It's a lot. That's what patient our CNAs would say, would call it when people were really a mess. Um, <laughs> yes, yes. Um, yeah. It's also, yeah. I mean, I feel bad for people that that's the state that they are in, but it is, I was unprepared for that as a new grad nurse was how my patients would all roll up and almost everyone was soiled in so many ways for like so many hours. And there was just everywhere. And I was like, Oh my gosh. So when your patients roll up nurses, um, wear a mask and put a little toothpaste under it or under your nose, or you can do like, um, some, I don't know what do you want to do, whatever kind of oil you want, like essential. Some people like, like peppermint oil. I used to put Vicks under my nose and then double mask or wear one mask and, uh, you can put it between the masks. And then if your patient ends up being totally fine, then it's fine. But if you don't know what they're going to smell like when they roll up, um, to no fault of their own sometimes. <laughs> so we could do that. Um, but yes, uh, I have your patient in 21, 22, a car wash. Oh, can I tell you what nurse Adrian said? Can I, did I ever tell you about the goat head under the bed? No. Um, you'll need, you'll need to do that. Alcohol pads also very helpful for smells. Um, so while we're waiting on nurse Adrian to tell us her goat story, unless she wants to tell it live on Thursday. Um, Oh, mama nurse says use mouthwash in the bath water. That's actually, um, I like that idea. Uh, perfect. Um, yeah. Uh, goat head. Perfect. Okay. Um, let's finish this document and then I, I will share my own goat story and <laughs> nurse Adrian can share her goat story. I've had many things that were brought into hospitals by patients, cats, dogs, snakes, um, rats, uh, all sorts of things when they open up their purse and they were like, where should I put her? And I'm like, Oh, Oh, <laughs> problem <laughs> problem. Oh, I've been sitting at the nurse's station and this cat just like rolled up to me and I was like, hi cat. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Birth bug. Oh, bugs. Oh yeah. People, mm -hmm. the, mm, mm, the bugs, <clears throat> um, patients meal. Oh, patients must. Oh, okay. I like this rule. Patients must rigidly obey any instructions given by the sister. That does not happen now. No one listens to me. <laughs> No one listens to me. Um, <laughs> um, 
no rigidly obey the instructors by the sister. Um, they must not leave their wards until after the medical officer has completed the whole round of the ward. And then only after they have obtained permission from the sister to do so patients who are able are expected to assist as far as possible in keeping the ward clean. I like this hospital. Okay. I'm just going to come out and say it. You have to bathe yourself. You have to brush your teeth. Uh, you have to keep your own area clean and, um, you need to listen to the nurses. So I don't know, um, when this was, but Prince Louise Scottish hospital, you've got it going on. Um, you've got it going on. Patients meals will be served as followed. It's breakfast, 8 AM dinner, 12 PM supper, 7 PM and tea at 5 PM. That's very nice. Um, I don't have anything. <laughs> Aaron said, are they hiring? Let's go find out. Let's go find out if Princess Louise Scottish Hospital is hiring. Um, and can we bring these rules back? Yes. When I rule the world, yes. This will be the actual rules. Um, these will be the rules <laughs> for our hospital where we will also have a car wash. We will incorporate that into, um, into the rule. Aaron says she'll be a nun if you're required. I can't be a nun. I, that's where I draw the line. I draw the line there. Are they union? I'm sure they are. They probably are a union of nuns. And that is probably the most terrifying force any hospital has ever come against. And hello, nurse Scott. Welcome. Welcome. Um, welcome. I will wear a habit. That's fine. Adrian, I will wear a habit. That's fine. I just, um, I'm going to have a problem with some of those other rules. Okay. I'm going to have a problem. <laughs> um, patients are strictly forbid forbidden to bring any intoxicating liquors into the hospital. Any infringement of this order will render the offender liable to immediate discharge. And they underlined this. So I feel like it's a problem. I understand it's Scotland. <laughs> These people are like, I don't need any of this stuff. I just need to <laughs> drink a little. What do they drink in Scotland? Um, scotch. That would probably make sense. Um, <laughs> there we go. Um, I feel like they probably would have been safer at this point, staying home and drinking scotch. I'm not, <laughs> but, um, I do like that. It's hunter lined and I like how they give all the power to the, these uh, nurses smoking in the wards. Okay. I mean, we are a classy establishment here. Smoking in the wards before 12 noon or after lights out is strictly forbidden. Do not be a sloppy human. Come on. You will not be smoking until afternoon. We all know that that is very rude. Smoking only gives you cancer if you smoke in the morning or at bedtime. Okay. In the morning or at bedtime, Adrian said, Oh, wow. Can you imagine if we could kick the patients out using drugs in the hospital? No one would be there. No one would be there. Um, at least I, when I worked med surge, no one would be there. Um, Oh, duh. It's because you just brushed your teeth. <laughs> Thank you for that clarification. You, you can't smoke in the morning or at bedtime because you brushed your teeth. You got to let that just like settle and everyone's got to do their rounds. That makes sense. Um, you've got to do the rounds. You've got to do the rounds. And then once everyone's had their rounds, then you are allowed to, you know, get your pipe out, smoke, um, betting and gambling, gambling of any description is strictly forbidden. Um, if you're healthy enough to bet and gamble, although that does sound kind of fun, be like, I bet John over there. <laughs> He's going to, what's going to happen over there. I bet he's going to, he's going to get in trouble because he's not going to listen to this nurse. Um, okay. So can't bet. This is sounding less fun for the patients. Um, to be honest, parcels are not to be taken out of the hospital without written authority from the sisters in charge of the ward. So I guess it wouldn't be the situation where nurses would be like, okay, everything you see in this room, take it, all of it, strip it down to the bones. Cause I have to throw it all away anyway. So just strip it down and take it, which is also problematic because you've already brought in so many things into the hospital, like we talked about, and you're rolling out like carts after carts. So when you get discharged from a hospital, if you're not familiar, they have these like rolling two decker carts usually. And then you load up those and you load up wheelchairs and you're like shoving them downstairs. And there's usually a full cart or and a wheelchair of like just stuff that we make people take home and they take it because we force it on them. Uh, and then they probably go home and they just like throw it away. Um, <laughs> but it's fine. You couldn't do that here. They were like, do not take any of this away. Okay. Do not everything. I always tell my patients to take everything. Me too. I'm like, take it all, go through all the drawers. Just like take it all. Not the linens, leave most of the linens. Okay. Most of them. You can take one or two if you need a pillow or a blanket or something. Um, 
take one. Uh, I feel like everyone takes home their hospital blanket for their baby. So I can't imagine how many of those they lose because we all do that, right? We all did that. I thought so. Um, let us see. Patients must be back in their wards by 10 PM. What are you doing? Why are you out wandering around? You can pretty much be out as late as the nurses. That doesn't seem fair. Um, the playing of cards or other games in the wards is not allowed before 12 noon. Wow. Mornings here sound very boring. <laughs> what are you doing all morning? All games and music must cease half an hour before lights out. Got to have some quiet time. Okay. You've got to have some quiet time and just rest. Um, and there will be no fun before 12 noon. Okay. You will spend the morning thinking about what you've done to get you here. All right. Uh, play oh, provided treatment is not interfered with the privilege of day leave may be granted. So you can leave. It's fine. Application for passes should be made to the sister in charge of the ward. Of course it is. No later than 9 a.m. on the day previous to that on which the pass is required. Patients must hand in their passes to the sister in charge of the ward on their return. I like this place. They're like, you have to give her time. She has a lot of things going on. You have to give her one full day's notice of like, I don't think I'm going to plan on dying tomorrow. Can I go on a field trip? And they're like, yes, we know we're very strict here. What you can go out and, you know, smoke before noon and do all of those things out in the public. Um, but you have to be back. You have to clock back in. Okay. Patient. And she can just tell you, no, if she's feeling grumpy, she's like, no, no, you can't do that. No, uh, you didn't shave well enough. So before 8 AM, it was 802. Um, so no, um, we had patients requiring to see medical superintendent on any subject should apply to the house at 9 30 AM. Um, I, I need, um, medical attention in this hospital. <laughs> Could you facilitate that for me? Um, that seems interesting. <laughs> Shouldn't they just come by and offer that to you? Maybe not. <laughs> what do I know? What, what do I know? Um, patient visiting days, Sunday, Wednesday, and Saturday from one 30 to five. That seems very limited, but Okay. Uh, and patients do for discharge will draw their clothing from the pack store. They will then hand the personal hospital clothing and equipment back to the pack store. They really do not want you to steal from here. They're like, give us all of our stuff back. We're then going to inspect it to make sure you didn't damage it in any way. At which point you probably have to hand it into the scary nun and she will decide if you can go home. <laughs> yikers, 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 yikers. Um, a pillow for the wrong list. Take a pillow. It's a long ride home. Um, <laughs> nurse God said, how many patients have those egg crate mattress pads in their basements? <laughs> for sure. For sure. Just get a U-Haul. Exactly. Chad. Um, exactly. Uh, <laughs> apparently people got, um, beer for patients to avoid DTs. Now we just give them like benzos. That's much less fun. Um, uh, dreamer said at my very first job, one particular nose would smoke while giving meds and charting. <laughs> oh my gosh. I can, I can imagine what that type of human is like, like just who they are as a person. <laughs> and I kind of like them. I won't lie. That's usually like the, the little old cranky people who just like walk into any room, no matter what the chaos. And they're just like, hmm. and then they can fix it in like two seconds while you're like over in the corner peeing yourself in fear. Um, good. <laughs> Nurse Adrian is here for the visitor policy. You can be here four hours a week. Um, that's all. That's all we've got for you. I'm trying not to laugh while my girlfriend is sleeping. Good luck. Good luck. Um, uh, while my nurse is drinking a soda, while my children don't run around, my children run around. Don't judge me. There is no judgment here. There is absolutely zero judgment here. Um, I gave my children a LaCroix this afternoon just to entertain them for a little while because I just wanted some peace and they liked the bubbles. They're like, this tickles my nose. It entertained them for a very long time. Zero, zero judgment. Um, uh, oh, Kate. Um, everyone send love to Kate and everyone in California. Um, Kate said the live is the ideal distraction for me in the fire zone in Cal Southern California. That is so stressful. I grew up in Southern California and those fires are so, so stressful. I hope you're very much okay. They keep sending out like, oh, no evacuation order for Kate. Um, but they're sending like emergency things out all the time. Uh, I am sorry. I hope your house is okay. I hope you don't have to evacuate. I hope the wind stops. So in Southern California, this is the worst fire season, um, because in like this time of year, because you get really, really bad winds and it's obviously very, very, very dry. Uh, and it's even more dry now because like they're not ever getting rain. So I am so sorry. Um, I hope we can be here and distract you. Um, 
Mm, Aaron gets it. Spent most of her life in Southern California. So scary. Ugh. All my neighbors. I grew up in Orange County. Where did all of you California people grow up? Um, mm, mm, all the anti-fire vibes your way. I used to have, um, yeah, that was scary growing up. I used to have like weird, like as a kid, I was really fixed, like always worried that my house was going to burn down. Um, oh, San Diego. I love San Diego. So pretty. Just so expensive. <laughs> So, so expensive. Okay. Rules for patience. Um, I'm going to give this a big thumbs up. I like these rules for the most part. Uh, I think we can learn a lot from princess Louise Scottish hospital personally, personally. Um, let us see. We have, which one is this rules for nurses? Okay. This is another undated one. These didn't all have dates, but, um, they looked fancy. So I downloaded them. Um, all nurses must remember that the state hospital is for the care of the mentally sick persons who are not responsible. Oh, oh, okay. So this is taking a very different tone. So in Scotland, we were very like the nurses in charge. You don't mess with the nun. Okay. You don't mess with the nun. Um, whoever this superintendent person is, Lamoul, yeah, Lamoul, H.A. Lamoul, H.A. Lamoul, I don't think I'm going to like H.A. Lamoul. All nurses must remember that in the state hospital, care for the mentally sick who are not responsible for their acts or words and whose welfare is always first to be considered. So that's really telling you <laughs> this must be from right now. Maybe someone, this is current. I might've thought this looked old because the print quality, you know, it was kind of dark, but I think this actually might be from current day from a current hospital who sent me this <laughs> is this a gaslighting bingo letter fun fact i think we're going to have a gaslighting bingo maybe tomorrow so let me know what time you guys are around tomorrow um because i got another email and then we have an update on the situation in minnesota so if you want a random extra episode of gaslighting bingo did we like gaslighting bingo let me know um this might be from there. Um, you have to, so you have to be nice to people and when they're not nice to you, that the patients are always to be treated kindly and that any abuse either physical or by words will merit instant discharge. Oh, wait, that the patients are always to be treated kindly and that any abuse either physical or by words will merit instant discharge. I don't think they mean the patient to be discharged. That's what I first thought when I read it. I think they mean that they'll fire the nurse <laughs> if, um, you aren't nice to people who hit you. Uh, Yikes. Um, no restraint is to be applied. Yeah, this is definitely from right now. And they're like, um, did you try to de-escalate the person who was um, throwing knives around the room with your words and throwing punches uh, before you put them in mitts? <laughs> yes. No. You let them swing at you. Okay. You let them swing at you. No restraints to be applied except in extreme emergency without the knowledge and consent of a medical officer. So this is, this really is, this might be from like today in case of any difference arising between patient and nurse did not try to argue or use any force, but send for the chief nurse or the other officer who will decide what shall be done. So just like now you're like, Hey, this patient probably needs some kind of restraints. They keep trying to kill me. And they're like, well, um, we're going to come let the doctor who has met with this person like once decide that. And, um, you can just deal with it until then. So that's good. I'm glad. <laughs> Oh, this is pretty much where we're at in case of an altercation between patients and blows have been exchanged. So if the patients start attacking each other, this is good. This is good. Either with fists or with other weapons. Again, why are we bringing weapons into the hospital? Let's be more like Scotland where we take them, where they're confiscated. And when a patient may have been pushed on the floor, the nurse shall immediately call a physician who will make an examination to determine what injuries have resulted, not call security, not be like, Hey, we should stop. Oh, you poor patient. <laughs> Let us see what's wrong here. Um, <laughs> now we know the real reason. Um, now we know the real reason that hospitals, have, we, nursing has always had a shortage. Patients shall be bathed at least once a week, at least once a week. Okay, so uh, we've, we've gone to the other direction once a week and as much oftener, as much oftener as necessary. No patient shall be bathed in the same water used for another. That seems good. Extreme care must be taken that no water faucet is running while the patient is in the tub. That's a weird rule. A nurse must be present every moment that bathing is going on to test the water and see that no accidents occur. <laughs> Great. Great. Uh, you have to keep testing the water. We would not want exactly, John, more bubbles, please. 
Okay. I feel like that could also go in a different direction quickly. All male patients shall be shaved once a week. And those who attend chapel exercises shall receive an extra shave on Saturday. So again, we're, um, yikes. Uh, <laughs> they didn't think that went through. No, they did not. Um, they did not. Uh, so this is bad. Um, this is bad. Okay. So I don't like this one. This one seems like it's too close to home. Um, it looked old timey, but and I think it is, but I think it just shows that people have not cared about nurses for, um, quite, quite a long, quite a long while. Um, Royal Columbian hospital, 1863. Is that what that says? It's kind of blurry. I know we're going to work with it. Um, Google did not have excellent upload quality on these nurses shall be most kind and attentive to the patients and so shall see in a general way to their comforts. Okay. So this is, this is what we've kind of got now. Like just keep the patients happy, right? You should be most kind and most attentive to them, even when they're being mean to you. So we are, you know, 150 years later and, uh, maybe more than that. And, uh, we're still on the event. We're still on that. Your first priority. Number one is still, you should be nice to people and, um, take their crap, take thy crap and smile, turn the poop into something happier. Nurses shall give medicine and food to the patient at the stated hours. I mean, maybe I would like my, that seems like the bar is low. Okay. <laughs> provide food and meds nurses shall give to the patient such food and medicine only as ordered by the physician they will decide what you eat be nice all the time yes montana go no pressure just be nice at all the time um and mama nurse yeah an actual tub that seems really gross like i just i just don't want to and adrian makes a good point it's canada and they are very nice so that's kind of a redundant role that's very true <laughs> very true um, nurses in the absence of the physician shall have full power over the inmates of the ward. Wow. There's a lot in that sentence. Um, so <laughs> mom and nurses surprises me. Not at all. Vanessa is like the nicest human in the entire world. Um, it does not surprise me that you are Canadian. Um, nurses in the absence of the physician shall have full power. I like the word full power. I like it. Um, over the inmates of the ward. So this is taking a slight turn because I do kind of like <laughs> you, you are the, in, you are here under my control. Okay. You're not guests. Um, as we now treat people, I feel like patient is fine, but like people think they're checking into like five-star hotels, um, and they want more bubbles. Like we just saw, they want you to be nice to them all the time, but, um, inmate of the ward visitors or patients. Um, oh, and you get to be in charge of the patients. You are, absolutely. Um, you are absolutely in charge. They say inmates, Adrian, but I think they mean patients, the inmates of the ward. Um, I think <laughs> they're just calling them that, um, prisoners on night shift. Yeah. Uh, okay. Um, it, it kind of feels like that for most patients probably. Um, you get to be in charge of the visitors, um, and will in such absence be held responsible for the preservation of order, the maintenance of comfort and cleanliness and the strict observation of hospital rules. So it sounds like in, um, Canada as well, they're giving their nurses like the power. They're like, all right, when they're gone, you need to hold this fort down you can do whatever you need to get there while being kind. You have to be kind while you lay the law down. <laughs> as long as you say the things with a smile on your face. Um, nurses shall themselves implicitly obey the orders of the physician in the management of patients and shall see the, that the latet do likewise. I don't know. Oh, ladder do likewise. Um, patients. Okay. So you're in charge of following the orders of the physician and also in charge of making sure the patient does the things with a smile. You will do this. They did order you to be eating or doing 8 billion enemas a day. Um, because that's how we treat everything. <laughs> Come on, <laughs> have your enema, um, do it with a smile friend. Um, good. Okay. Okay. Nurses shall keep themselves and the patients neat and clean. Gotta look pretty. You gotta look pretty. Um, you can only get a bath once a week somehow. Uh, but you do need to somehow, um, stay clean. It's fine. Everything's fine nurses shall report to the physician on his next, his, obviously, I mean, 
So, um, gentlemen in the chat, you're no longer nurses, you're doctors. Congratulations. Your training was probably the exact same as nurses, but you know, you're dudes. So clearly you get to be doctors. Um, lucky you nurses, um, shall report to the physician on his next visit, any infringement of the hospital rules by patient or visitors, and you get to punish them. Okay. You, uh, you get to punish them, whatever. I guess you would like, as long as you're doing it with a smile on your face, nurses shall keep themselves. Okay. We're clean. Nurses shall not take fees, presents, or gratuities of any kind from the patients or their friends under any pretense. That's just not fair. <laughs> that just seems unkind. Um, you're still not supposed to do this. seems very unfair. Sometimes my patients did order me desserts, even though they weren't going to eat their desserts. Does that count? Would I get fired? Um, <laughs> would I get fired? Uh, that was very kind when they did that. They're like, what would you like as a dessert? I was like, yes, please. <laughs> I will take chocolate cake, please. And thank you. Awesome. Will I be handing you your meds first? I'm not going to say I won't. Okay. Thanks. Um, nurses infringing on any of the above rules shall be brought before the board by physicians and shall be liable to immediate dismissal. So then you have to go in front of all the dudes again, and they will decide your fate. Um, it's most likely that, you know, if you've kept yourself pretty clean, then maybe you're going to be fine. Maybe you're going to be fine. Troy P. Welcome to your first live. Welcome. I hope it's everything you dreamed of and more, um, everything you dreamed of and more, <laughs> uh, Chad and Matthew, good luck. You'll be just fine. Um, please be kind to the ladies on the board as you decide if we can still work here, even if we have the audacity to go to the hair salon. I know. I know. Our character is very, uh, it's unknown. House rules. Oh, this will be good. House rules for nurses and probationers. I don't know what a probationer is, but let's look at your house rules. Um, so this is, I guess if you're living at the hospital, right? Okay. So again, unknown date, we can figure it out when we read. No, what? nurses are requested. To, at least you're requested. Now you're not required here in Brook. Bro bowling broke hospital incorporated. Um, it's requested. Oh, thanks God. Um, probationer is a nurse in training. Okay. So apparently you have to live at the nursing school. That's hell. <laughs> Could not wait to get out of my nursing school each day. I could not imagine having to live there. <laughs> could you imagine? <gasps> could you imagine? Nurses are requested to be quiet and orderly in their behavior in the wards, corridors, and dormitories to treat and respect the uniform of the profession they will represent at all times to be loyal to those in authority over them and to remember that the credit of the hospital depends upon their actions and demeanor. So if you are a skanky little hoe and you're out there dyeing your hair, going to dance clubs, drinking spirits, or smoking you know, it's going to come back and look bad on us. So don't you dare, don't you dare be making us look bad. Okay. We all know you're not a good nurse. If you do that, your future generations will definitely be the nurses with tattoos. <sighs> and they'll probably drink out of their water bottles at the nurse's station. It's very embarrassing. Number two, they are to report any ailment cut or infection infected scratch at once to the assistant matron. They're especially con especially cautioned against going on duty without a meal and are advised to go out every day during their off duty hours. So we will control you inside and outside. We're going to do this under the pretense of trying to care about you. Um, but it sounds a little bit micromanagey and maybe a little bit creepy and too much. So you're, you've come a little bit too far. Okay. I get that you want us to do well, but this is, it's too much. It's too much. You can't be good. We, it sounds like you want to take care of me a little bit. Like I can't do anything fun and I have to stay inside and report everything to you. I don't like it. I would not be allowed to do this. Um, <laughs> Matthew wives, heaven forbid, <laughs> waves fan. Uh, at least they get a meal before they work. So, I mean, that's very true. They get a meal and they get to go outside, which is more than I got to do on most 12s. So they want you to eat. I do appreciate that. Nurses may not absent themselves from meals or lectures without the permission of the matron. They're permitted to leave breakfast table at 6 50 AM, but they must be on duty on their wards by 7 AM or this permission will be withdrawn. <laughs> okay. So, um, you got to show up. This happened in my nursing school. I have gone to Clint, like I have gone to school throwing up and I was just provided Zofran. They're like, you're going to be fine. <laughs> Keep going. <laughs> I was like, where did you get this and why? And how are you giving this to me? Um, but yeah, uh, nursing school. <laughs> 
no joke. And then like, sometimes they would want you to go to clinical in that state. And you're like, I am not well. Um, why are you making me do this? Like I'm going to make other people unwell and I will never for the life of me understand why healthcare does that when they're like, well, can you push through? Uh, can you push through? And you're like, I don't really want to make everyone else sick. Maybe I shouldn't be on death's door before I don't come in and make my patients even more ill. But what do I know? And yes, Chad, of course it's always a lady. Of course it's always a woman, you know, like, Oh, I don't think you get to be a dude nurse until I don't even know when, maybe after world war two. Uh, yeah, it was a Protestant work. I think maybe after, does anyone know when you were allowed to be a dude nurse? Um, we'll see. Uh, we'll see. I think this is probably still in the era where you couldn't be married either. Um, nurses, they are required to be punctual for meals, lecture day and duty. Those who are late for breakfast twice in one week will have their long, uh, long off duty time curtailed. So you're late, you're done. Sounds very accurate to current. They are not allowed to use the hospital's telephone without permission. They might be calling boys or worse girls. I guess that would be one way about when they're like, Oh, you can't be married. You have to live in this home with a bunch of other women. It's like, well, what a bummer. <laughs> I'll just hang out here forever. I wonder if people who are nurses were historically more likely to also enjoy the company of women. That would be interesting. Um, but you know, <laughs> got to call, got to, got to ask to use the phone. You never know what you're going to do. Ward conversation at meals in public conveyances and shops is strictly forbidden. Oh, you can't talk about patients. I thought they were saying you couldn't talk at all. Okay. Yeah. So you can't, um, talk at all, or you have to talk, you can't talk about your patients. That seems, that seems okay. The amount of things that I've heard in, um, elevators and public places about patients, like huge HIPAA violations, like is astounding. So I get it. Um, Google says 1955 for men. Okay. Okay. Um, nurse Scott, thank you. Thank you. In 1955, the nurse army nurse corps commissioned its first male officer, Lieutenant Edward T. Leon. Interesting. That is very, very interesting. Thank you for looking that nurse. Adrian said my entire class showed up to clinical on one hour of sleep because we were freaking out of studying and all sent home. Well, I'm glad they sent you home. That seems much better. Um, Montana gal said literally had to publicly vomit to be sent home. Well, that's horrifying. And I also very much believe you because I've had that experience. Um, they are forbidden to loiter in the ward kitchens when off duty. Cause you know, you might snack and, uh, you know, <laughs> You never know. You can't have people looking of anything other than like our imagined. I don't know. Nurses always then looked very like gaunt, like they didn't really eat. You know what I mean? Heaven forbid. Um, heaven forbid. Uh, bedrooms must be kept neat and fit for inspection at all times. Why are they going in your bedroom? They must not be unduly crowded with photographs, <laughs> ornaments, etc., and faded flowers and rubbish must be removed. Put in a pail provided for this purpose. Don't you be having little trinkets from your people hanging around your room. That's going to distract you. Um, and, uh, might give you bad thoughts. You might think of those thoughts might lead to you not wanting to be a nurse anymore because you have to go get married. So we can't have that. We cannot have it. Um, money and valuables must not be left lying around and all bedroom doors must be kept locked. Nurses must replace lock keys. Okay. That seems, that seems fair. No meals may be taken into the dormitory without it's the permission of the matron and tea making is not allowed at night without permission. You cannot just go around making tea, Tabitha. <laughs> Who do you think you are? <laughs> what on earth? It is forbidden to borrow crockery, cutlery, or glasses from the nurse's dining room. You're out of cups? You're out of cups. I don't really know what to tell you. Um, nurses are required to exercise hospital economy in every detail with regard to gas, electric, light, coal, dressing, ward, linen, cleaning materials, and food in the wards and in their own quarters. I'm guessing they would not smile upon the concept of stealing warm blankets. So hospitals are just as stingy. They still get their panties in a bunch. When you steal their warm blankets, drink their soda or heaven forbid, eat their ice cream or applesauce. Okay. 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 There we go. Um, fire precautions, but why just at night? Things don't just catch on fire at night. <laughs> I think they were just trying to make their lives miserable. Or maybe there was something like, you know, you know, uh, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what tea gets, what tea does to people at nighttime. Maybe it's making people feel certain things they shouldn't be feeling. 
Um, nurses may not accept any gifts from the patients or their friends. Again, that's not fair. What if they just want to give me a present and they shall not take charge of the money or other valuables belonging to the patients, but hand them at once to the ward sister. All lights must be out by 10 30 and smoking is forbidden except in the general sitting room during the daytime. <laughs> if you're in the living room with everyone else polluting everyone's lungs and getting the house smelling like smoke, that's totally fine. Don't you dare do it anywhere else. Don't you dare. It's not a good look. However, in the living room, that's fine. That's much more appropriate place to be smoking. Okay. <laughs> much more appropriate place. Oh, Aaron said, I barely made it to my most recent clinical cour courtesy of Dayquil and Afrin. Oh, I hope you feel better. That sounds absolutely, absolutely terrible. Um, absolutely awful. Uh, <laughs> yes. God. Oh yeah. I guess you could have a start. It says nothing about cigars. Chad, I knew I liked you. Chad is my, oh yes. Good, good, good. So we're establishing our panel of people here and Chad, I feel like is my loophole person that I would be like, well, you did not mention cigars. Okay. You told me I couldn't have tea. You said nothing about coffee. I don't know what to say. I don't know what to tell you. And Scott's over there being the person who is, um, you know, he's following the rules. He's being very kind. He's doing all the things. He's very rational. He's like constantly trying to talk us off of cliffs. And Adrian's the one that actually knows the rules and is going to come and bail us out of jail. She's going to be like, um, didn't like, <laughs> do you have no idea how this system works? And we're like, no, no, I do not. That is why we have you. Um, fun fact, if you had an infectious disease, you weren't allowed to be admitted to the hospital. That's good. <laughs> That's That makes a lot of sense. Don't you dare come in here with one of those infectious diseases. Yes, Scott is our cooler. It'll all be fine. It'll all be fine. <laughs> I love our group. Thanks for being part of it. You, you are the best people um, and everyone who watches. Uh, you're the reason why it works. So thank you. I appreciate you. Um, don't forget, if you're watching this to do compressions on the like button, it does tell the YouTube gods that you're having a good time. I hope you're having a good time. If not, um, I'm sorry. Uh, you can go. Um, and it says it to other people and that brings my soul happiness. Um, let's see. Did we already read these? No nurse is no, I don't think we did. Cause it talks about poison. And I would definitely remember if we talked about poison. Um, let us see. Um, we'll read through this one and then we'll go through some ads and then we'll have a quick Q and a, and then we'll call it a night. Does that sound good? Because a lot of these are starting. I don't want to beat this over the head. Um, that's why people with TB were often sent to sanitariums out in the boonies and lepers also. That's so sad. Oh, that's awful. Um, yeah, it's strange that they didn't know about microbes. Like now it seems so obvious, but I guess then it wasn't no nurse. This is in 1950. Um, nurse, uh, no nurse, um, is to enter the ward except in uniform or to visit any ward other than which she is working. So you can't go anywhere else. <laughs> you can only come here and you have to wear your outfit. Don't you dare be coming back to visit people. You might fall in love with them and then you would have to quit. And that's sad. Okay. That's not good. Each nurse on arrival at the hospital should apply to the matron for keys to her room, a deposit of two, six, I don't even know about it is required that is refunded when the keys are given up, no responsibility and money. So they're very, again, worried about the, uh, very worried about the, um, the money here seems to be a theme. No nurse is to consult the house surgeon or members of the medical staff without the matron's permission. Don't you dare go talking. You can't page people unless you have the head nurse. She doesn't want to look stupid. Okay. She doesn't want to be looking dumb. She wants to, she's going to be a gatekeeper. I mean, that's not necessarily a terrible role. <laughs> Sometimes I feel like you should always phone a friend before you, especially in the beginning when you're just starting and you're unsure if you should be paging someone about this, just ask a friend, be like, am I, am I actually worried about this? And they can be like, no friend, no, 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 we're not gonna, we're not gonna worry about that. Um, yeah. Does that mean no floating? Because that sounds great to me. I think it does. I think that means no floating. <laughs> um, oh, all poisonous drugs ordered for a patient must be checked by a sister before being administered. Nurses must never refill anesthetic bottles except in the presence of an anesthesia, uh, anesthetist or a theater sister. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, UK is not playing. Um, they are saying, Hey, we're going to be safe. We are going to be safe. We're going to have to, you have you double check and, um, we're not gonna, we're not going to, um, you can't cheat the system. Okay. So this is not terrible. All poisonous drugs. I feel like <laughs> I want to know what they considered poisonous. Um, 
Nurses may always wear their uniform in the approved manner and should always be in smart appearance. Uh, new uniform material will be issued when required application um, to be made to the matron. So you have to ask for new clothes and you must look nice. Uh, you have to be in bed by 10 p.m., lights out by 10.30. Nurses should not go to the hospital grounds after evening per without permission. And night nurses must be in bed at 1 p.m. Who's staying up that late? Don't you go to bed when you go home? That's so weird. You shouldn't do that. Exceptions. They may, if they wish, be called at 4.30 on Thursdays. You can, what? And when lectures are arranged for the evenings. At all times, uh, must be the rule of seven hours in bed must be observed. So you have to get seven hours of sleep. I don't hate that rule. I don't hate that rule. After having night shift off, nurses must, re must report to the matron before 2 p.m. I don't like that rule, though. That seems mean. Nurses must make their own beds, dust their room before 1030, position the furniture in the room so it must not be altered. Don't you be getting creative. Do not let any of the, we are not creative. Okay, here we are. This is a science. We allow no creativity. <laughs> I like the bedtime rule too. I got to make That's a great one. Um, they're responsible for all preparation and cleaning. Matron will grant permission for friends to visit the hospital at a convenient time. What is a convenient time? <laughs> Nurses must notify the matron if they wish to sleep away from the hospital when having days off. You cannot be going off. Okay. You cannot just be disappearing on us. You want to go spend the night at someone's house? No. Inconvenient. You may not. When meals are not supervised by the matron or the sister, the senior nurse present is held responsible. She should see that the table is collect correctly laid, that there's sufficient food, that food should not, should be hot, is sent in and kept hot. And any complaints deemed necessary, but should be named by the senior nurse to the matron. So they probably don't appreciate people drinking out of urinals and eating out of like, emesis basins is probably what I'm assuming, which is what happens at most potlucks. But anyway, um, <laughs> well, that was, that was interesting. Um, I kind of liked, uh, the sleeping. Um, I, I know, God, I wish there were seven hour rules a lot. Most of the time I didn't even have like seven hours in between my shift. Uh, like by the time you drove home and came back. So I do kind of enjoy that one. I think that's great. Um, I thought we could look at some ads really quick because they were just, they were something special. Um, oh, this was interesting, but that looks like the rules are very small. Um, let's look at some ads just to see how they got people to come into these jobs. Cause you're like, wow, this sounds pretty terrible. How did they, um, how did they attract you? Oh, save his life and find your own. <laughs> Be a nurse. <laughs> okay. <laughs> because... I will find my validation and my purpose in life through saving dudes. That's good. That's good. <laughs> Who said Kate, no feng shui in the dormitory? No, that would bring happiness. That is not allowed. It might encourage you to drink tea. And we know what that means. That's a slippery slope to getting your hair done and going dancing. And then the tattoos. Okay. And then you might want tattoos. Always clean urinals. Always obviously, obviously. Did no one else drink out of urinals? I, I, we always drink out of urinals. Um, it was just like funny. Okay. Does anyone else, someone else had to have done this. Um, I'm hoping <laughs> like little portable ones you walk around with like a, some kind of a, like a red Robin catheter sticking out the side. Um, <laughs> that um maybe okay um let's say <laughs> we need suckers apply within okay so if in case this ad wasn't um catching your fancy um let us see what else we had earn big money big money as a graduate practical nurse train at home in 12 weeks well nursing school still really enjoys trying to get people to come to their program not by touting its excellence by how but by how fast you can get through they're like hey you want to be a nurse practitioner? We can make it happen in 18 months. Okay. We can make it happen for you at home. So nothing has changed. Absolutely. Nothing has changed here. Um, nothing, uh, one seventy one dollar and 74 cents a lesson. Sounds great. Um, and the desperate shortage. So they were short even then. So why don't you offer big money now? <laughs> the solution seems the same train at home in 12 weeks, the desperate attempt, um, the desperate shortage of nurses means opportunity for you earn the Lincoln certificate in 12 weeks of your spare time, just time you have lying around spare time, um, and make high earnings year after year. Good age education, age education. I don't know the second word, not important. 
Earn while learning. Investigate today. Good. <laughs> oh, good, 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 good. I love that. Okay. So um, in case that doesn't get you, you can be a nurse. You may become independent. You may become independent so that one day you can decline and not be a burden. You may become independent and in a short time, be in a position to earn, are you ready? From 15 to $30 a week. Wow. Times have not changed per week in a pleasant profession. That's not true. That is not true. That is not pleasant. In a pleasant profession by our simple home study course requiring a small expense, just a little expense and part of your spare time each day. While they're really like emphasizing, it's not going to cost a lot of money and you can do, do this in your spare time, which um, that's clearly, I feel like that's automatically, it's interesting that like this would clearly be targeting a class of people who had spare time. Cause I feel like most people didn't have spare time, right? Because they were probably working and doing something else. Um, our school is the oldest in America. It's a weird thing to tout, not like the best, but the oldest, you know, we're not the best. We have not kept up the times, but we were here first. So that's our, that's our ground and we're standing on it. And it's affiliated with one of the largest hospitals in the city. Our medical staff has the entire charge of all correspondence and our men of long experience. Great. Great. So the dudes who have worked here for a long, Hey, they have worked here for a long time and we have been open forever. So, wow. What a shining endorsement. <laughs> that was all I ever needed to know. Um, our diplomas are recognized by leading physicians across the U S send today and tell us if you're thinking about nursing. No, I will not. No, thank you. No, thank you. Train now to be a nurse for thousands of girls, not boys, obviously obviously not for thousands of girls. Hospital nursing office offers a happy and satisfying career. I don't know. Like, does this person look happy? She looks like she's like, just kill me. <laughs> and that's the picture you chose for a happy and satisfying career. That's good. Once qualified as a state registered nurse, a world service and interest is yours. And remember that nursing is a very important war work. Send the coupon now for information. Why are they trying to like, <laughs> I feel like this one, at least like it can be a satisfying career, but they're trying to do it as like, it's very easy in your spare time. You can become a nurse. It is very pleasant and very happy. No, who believes this become a nurse trainees required urgently. Oh, we could go use this today and great opportunities for young girls. That sounds bad. That sounds bad. <laughs> I feel like that would not be a legal slogan. Now, great opportunities for young girls. See your local hospital today. Good. Good. Great opportunities for young girls. Super, super duper. Oh, there was that one. Cause I just loved it so much. Um, and this one, no patient with a fatal. Oh, oh, this is interesting. We should read this one. Okay. So this is rules for nurses that someone wrote down um, probably for a wall and it is, uh, they cross stitched it, which is very hardcore. Um, <laughs> like, wow, your, your dedication to this is, um, very impressive. I need to find a larger size because this is, I do not know what I was thinking when I, uh, saved this one and this one and that other one. Cause I, I certainly cannot read it. My eyeballs. No, 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 that's not it. We're going to find it. Um, okay. Rules for nurses and other members of the hospital. Um, this will be our last one. And then we can have like a little Q and a bit. Um, if anyone has any questions or we can just chat and then we will wrap up at in 15 minutes. Um, no person shall be received into the house who is visited or suspected to be visited with the plague itch scald head or other infectious diseases. And if any should shut such should be taken in than to be discharged as soon as discovered. So like Adrian was saying, don't you dare come into this hospital as sick. I want that sign for my house. That's what I want at my front door. No person shall be received into this home who is visited or suspected to be visited with the plague, itch, scald head, or other infectious diseases. Maybe I'll just cross stitch that and I'll put it right outside my front door. I'll be like, don't you dare. Especially the scald head. I don't know what the scald head is, but it might be lice. <laughs> I don't want it here. Okay. Um, new merch. <laughs> we'll just make a sign. 
<laughs> like this and we can all put it on our houses. That's perfect. Um, patients shall not swear, not take God's name in vain, nor revile, nor miscall one another, nor strike or beat one another, nor steal meat or drink apparel or other things from one another. It's a good rule. It's a good rule. Patients shall not abuse themselves by inordinate drinking or incon incontinent living. <laughs> oh, you can't pee yourself. Um, nor talk nor act immodestly upon pain of expulsion. And when they go or return from the meals and beds, they shall crave God's blessing and return thanks to God. Very worried about manners here. I like it. No drinks shall be brought in and sold to patients except for the physicians by the physicians and surgeons license. Only, only people who are, um, only the doctors can come in and have a side hustle of selling you booze while you're in this hospital. It's very fair. I feel like they should share with the nurses, get in on that little side hustle, but I got you a nurse Adrian with the, um, save here, scald head staff, staphylococcus. And I will never call it staphylococcus again. We will call it scald head <laughs> only, only, um, <laughs> well, that rules out 90% of my patients and me too. Can the nurses swear? I say, yes, I say yes. Um, no drink. Okay. No patient with the foul disease. No patient with the foul disease shall go out of his ward, nor come into the house to fetch anything, nor within chapel, nor sit upon the seats in the courtyard upon the pain of expulsion. So where can they go? I thought you weren't even allowed in the house. Oh, you can have the foul disease. Um, someone look up what the foul disease is because it's not the plague. It's not scald head. It's not an infectious disease. So what is the foul disease? <laughs> Because apparently you are allowed to be here if you have the foul disease, but nothing else. Thank you, mom, for the super sticker. I appreciate you. Um, we were, uh, you'll have to let us know if anything was, if you had any wacky rules that you remember from mid eighties, that would be when you started. I think so. Um, it's, oh, <laughs> venereal diseases. <laughs> Interesting. So those could be let in chicken pots. Um, is that what you mean by VD chicken pox? It might be transmit pox. It might be bird flu. Unsure. Unsure. Um, let's see. Uh, where is the rule for patients not to pee on the nurse? I hope we get there. Um, none of the women shall go into the men's wards, no other men into the women's wards without license upon pain of expulsion. Seems fair. The sisters shall clean the wards by 6 a.m. That is not fair. That is not fair to anyone. No one wants to be woken up that early to have their room cleaned. No one wants to be doing that at the end of their shift. No one wants that. Um, eight. Oh, foul or foul F O U L. So not bird. <laughs> I see the confusion there. Um, probably the clap. It probably is. <laughs> it probably is. Every 10th bed is to be left empty to air. Not more than one patient is to be put into each bed. Very fair rule. I feel like they were trying and they were like, you know what? Um, let us, uh, we might give everyone, um, some of these non-communicable diseases unless we leave one every 10th bed open. Yeah. That's plenty of aeration. Everything's fine now. Everything's going to be fine. <laughs> that will definitely fix tuberculosis. The sisters shall see that no card play or dicing takes place in the house. Again, rude, slippery slope, dice games leads to drinking tea leads to getting your hair done. And we end at tattoos. Unacceptable. If any of the sisters shall disorder themselves by brawling with one, whoa, if any of the sisters shall disorder themselves by brawling with one another or the other misdemeanors, she is to be removed from her ward and subsequently discharged from, <laughs> from the house forever, forever. <laughs> wow. <laughs> AKA French crust. Oh boy. Oh boy. Oh boy. Um, <laughs> foul and foul. Very important distinction. You're right, Aaron. Um, so don't fight with each other nurses. Okay. Don't, don't fight with each other. You will be left forever. You will be kicked out. Um, old sheets shall be washed and given to the surgeon for dressings. <laughs> That's why you can't pee in the sheets. That makes sense now. <laughs> You can't pee in the sheets because that's going to go on someone's surgical wound. <laughs> you know what? I know what we could do with these sheets. These old bed sheets that have been soiled with all sorts of interesting body fluids. 
what could we use them for? Sterile cloth. That's right. <laughs> Let's use the bed sheets that have been destroyed by body fluid as sterile cloths in the operating room. Why are people dying? Why? Um, no surgeon shall suffer his servant to perform any operation, dilate or cut open imposthumous or sinuous ulcers, except the master of such servant to be present and direct the same. That sounds bad. So, um, that sounds bad. Uh, <laughs> bad. No dead body shall be opened. Fair. Dis dissected or dismembered without leave from the treasury or steward in the absence of the treasurer. <laughs> um, so the, uh, as long as the banker is here, um, then you can cut the body open. But if the banker is not here for some reason, that's the person who drew the short end of the stick. Uh, they're, they're like, who at this meeting wants to be in charge of making sure no one cuts open the dead bodies. No one raised their hand. They were like, Phil, we don't really like you um, as the money keeper. So Phil, it's you. It's you. Uh, you're going to be in charge of making sure the med students stop chopping open the dead bodies. Okay. The sexton shall keep the chapel and yards clean and make graves six feet deep, six feet long and three feet wide at 18 pence each. It's a weird thing to throw. <laughs> There's your one rule. Um, and my mom said when we were charting, if physician needed a seat, we had to give up our seat so they could sit down. That was in 1982. So yes, we were talking about that. And frighteningly, Adrian said they, she had to do that too in 2005. So that's awful. Kate said, Denise, God, I remember that also. I had to give up, um, having to give up my seat for the doctor. Uh, um, yeah, check your, uh, <laughs> check your pockets first to see if you're going to chop open this person. No one, no INDing in absence without supervision, supervision, oddly specific. I know that is, it's a very, you know, everything else goes, but don't you dare do an IND without, um, supervision. Uh, you might, we have to make sure that the beds are, you know, you might be trying to do an IND with people in it. Like there might be 10 beds in a row and that would cause infection. That would, that would cause infection. Phil skipped the wrong meeting. He really did. He really, really did. Um, on the units, Kimberly Davis says on the units I've been on, if you see a dark doctor, you get up so they can chart. Yikes. So that was definitely not the vibe where I was. <laughs> You can go find your own seed and you can find your own, um, you can find your own computer. I am very well sure that you can, uh, yikes. Also keep in mind bodies were dug up in the 19th century and brought for medical instruction. Yes. So I think that's probably why they're so protective of it. And that's why Phil's job is terrible. Um, because they did, they didn't have anything else. They would just dig up the bodies so that they could examine them because they needed to learn. Right. But they didn't always really ask. So that was, that was the problem. And in like a lot of places, there's a lot of like cultural significance with like bodies, right. Especially once they've, um, well, once they're dead, like, so it's seen as very like disrupt. I mean, it is very disruptive, but like it had layers upon that of like, you know, don't take up the body. Cause then there were beliefs about the afterlife and it was just a whole mess. Um, I've listened to a lot of podcasts on that strangely, but yes. Um, doctors now have access to the HR on their phones and can dictate. Yeah. And they have like resident rooms and all sorts of stuff. I feel like there's plenty of computers. Uh, Scott said, I've given up a seat, but not because the doctor is better than me, but because he or she is a guest on our unit. It's good manners and good PR. You're nicer than me, Scott. See, we're going back to, um, <laughs> you're nicer than me because I'm like, uh, you're on this unit too. You, I don't know if I see them as guests. I don't see residences and doctors as guests. I'm like, well, we all work on the same unit. Um, but that's nice of you. Uh, medicine is a lot younger than we think. That is a very good point. And until very recently, uh, I was like, oh, sorry, that was probably loud for your ears. Until very recently, I was thinking, I was like, really, what would be the difference between the training of like a nurse and a physician, other than the fact that one was a boy and one was a girl? Because really, we didn't know anything about medicine and it was just very sketchy. <laughs> I want to find like an old medical textbook. That would be fascinating if we found the one for nurses, um, and ran through like, what were the different nursing treatments and stuff? Like what were the old medical treatments? Because I feel like the school would pretty much be like the exact same, right? You're not, cause we didn't know anything, right? <laughs> We're like, I don't really know anything about any of this. So let's just go around and guess and see where we end up for both of them. But you know, if you were a girl, you were a nurse. And if you were a dude, you were a doctor. Evidence-based journals are only post-World War II. Again, Adrian, thank you for all of your knowledge bombs. Like I said, 
like we said earlier, Adrian's going to be the one to bail me and Chad out of jail. Um, Scott's going to be telling us it's totally fine because Adrian knows everything somehow, like everything. Um, that would be great. I bet some museum has them somewhere. Yeah. I bought, uh, some old textbook for nurses from like 1949 today off of some random website from England. We'll see if it shows up. If it does cool, we'll read through it and I'll try to find one for like old medical school ones. That could be very, very interesting. Uh, nurse Scott said, I feel like medical training back then was what nurses get now. And the nursing training is what CNAs get. Yeah. I mean, everyone is definitely like bumping up a level. Um, Washington died from bloodletting. He did. Um, I just watched a fascinating YouTube video on how all the presidents died. I don't remember whose it was. That's unhelpful for you. I will find it and I will link it in the description, but it was fascinating. I was like, I, first of all, did not know how many presidents were assassinated. Like I just was unaware of that. Um, and also the, uh, general unhealthiness of a lot of our friends, like, uh, there was a, like a, a year period where everyone was just keeling over from heart attacks. And, um, yeah, a lot of them died early on from bloodletting. That's yikers, yikers. <laughs> I, Aaron, I saw that too. It was very interesting. Wasn't it? Um, it was Dr. Mike. Yes, it was Dr. Mike. Duh. <laughs> Duh. <laughs> I'm like, it was someone, uh, he might be known mildly. Yes. It was Dr. Mike. That was very interesting. Um, I wanted him to do a lot more like that. I was like, I love this. Tell me more. Um, so yeah. All right, friends. Thanks so much for joining us tonight. I do very much appreciate you. Um, let us know if, and us as in me, apparently my other personalities are coming out. Let me know if you guys like this type of video. I thought we could just use something a little bit light and more fun. If you want me to go over that book, if it gets here ever from England, um, let me know. And yeah, uh, we will see you Thursday for, we're going to be discussing that hospital closing in Georgia, um, and kind of the implications and why, and going into some different things with like, uh, Medicaid expansion and, and things like that. And how this is all kind of playing out. So that's why we had a more fun one today. Cause I was like, that's going to be a little bit more difficult. Um, just like sad. Uh, and so Thursday at three, I think, or maybe three 30, I forget. I, it's already up on the YouTube channel. If you want to set a reminder for it, um, that will be there. If you want to support the channel, you can do the compressions on the like button an odd number of times. It helps raise the, the vital signs of the video. Um, I also have some different downloads. If you are interested in like, um, a report sheet, soap note sheets, things like that, that if you, um, I have for free for download in my description, I'm trying to think of all the things my sister told me I should talk about all the things, my NP binder, I'm going to upload it at some point, re-upload it. I'm doing a huge upload update on, um, bones and like algorithms for like joint pain. And if you want to support the member by channel, by becoming a member, you can do that too. And I'm going to really try to figure out how discords work. <laughs> maybe somehow, hopefully one day, maybe. Um, yeah. All right, friends. I very much appreciate it. Kara Dodge. Thank you for being a channel member. I appreciate you. Um, <laughs> nurse Liz is the reason I go through on peace. Well, well, you're very sweet. I hope it's going well. Um, you can watch it on the replay and then you can watch it in two times speed. That's how I love. That's how I love to watch YouTube videos. You can just watch them super fast. All right, friends. I hope you have a beautiful rest of your evening. Please do always remember that you are more than enough. You are not alone and you can do hard things like NP school and surviving life. All right, friends. Bye. <laughs> do, 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 do. I can't find my end screen. So I'm going to sing to you. Actually, I've been singing a lot of, I was randomly playing the piano earlier. Um, I haven't had an itch to play the piano in like 8 million years. Um, but I did tonight and I was doing that and I was singing a lot of Phantom of the Opera. Weird mood. My children hated it. They're like, I don't like this mom. It's like, well, it's happening. So we're going to have to get used to it. All right. I found my end screen. Goodbye. <laughs>